do you follow the golden mean? The truth. Hey guys, it's me, Grip Misfit, and I'm making a video about Aristotelian thought. And today I'm with a new guy, my buddy Gage. That's good, yeah. We're gonna start this conversation about Aristotle's virtue. His father had ties with the monarchy, so he grew up in the palace. He grew up and then had ties. He tutored future kings. And he also taught a guy who keeps appearing on the series many times, Alexander the Great. A lot of people romanticize and say, oh, that's why he conquered so much. It's because Aristotle taught him. He taught him virtue theory. He taught him how to be self-disciplined. I don't believe that. I feel like that's over-romanticized because when you're 14, you don't learn a lot. I think that just realistically, 14 year olds don't have the desire for knowledge overall. But when you're 14, you don't have that, that type of desire. Oh yeah, I feel you, man. Like, I had no ambition until like 16. So I was all talk about like career and shit, but like I never really did anything. I just kind of scooted by in class. You ain't gonna have any ambition until you're like a little bit older than 14. I feel like maybe Alexander the Great is a little bit more great because he did it on his own. What questions do you have on on virtue theory? Was he like a like a way back when atheist? Like just somebody who like who doesn't believe a utopian world like Pluto did? Like uh, and for instance, most Christians nowadays was he just like he he was just more into science? He he believed that we were created from nature some freaky way. He was very into science, you know, he took inspiration from Socrates. He didn't learn directly from him, but Socrates inspired Plato. His teacher was Plato, so he didn't believe in the great gods like everyone else did. I'm not sure if he didn't believe in a scientific theory of how we're made, but he was definitely an entrepreneur in science and ultimately developing the term that we call science. He was in such a vast majority of fields because he was such a curious individual. He was in biology, politics, economics, mathematics geology, meteorology. Perhaps you could call him idealistic. He wasn't idealistic, but it's Plato. Yeah, like he was He was kind of religious, right? Yeah, that makes sense. So, what, do you know exactly like what he believed in? You mean religiously or philosophically? Religiously. I think that he believed in a monotheistic de deity. Do you know what that is? It's like our version of like God, right? No, not, not our version of God, but Mono, monotheistic meaning only one. Yeah, yeah, like there's just like one guy that just created all the shit. Yeah, yeah but it, it might not be the, the perspective that we see it in Christianity because Christianity did, didn't exist then. Let's talk about Aristotle's theory of virtue. So Aristotle believed that everything has something called a delos. And a delos is when something reaches its highest potential or they, it's reached for its purpose. For example, a knife. When I use a knife and it can cut a vegetable, then it's reached its, its delos. And another example, a sapling turned into a tree, it's reached its delos. Aristotle believed that this wasn't only for, for objects, this was for people too. And when you achieved eudaimonia, that's a human reaching its delos. Does that make sense? Uh, I got you. So delos is like potential. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, like, he believed everything has, like, a destined potential? I mean, that's like saying everything has, like, a use. Something's failed to reach that, that point, the day was. Yeah, deadbeat kids. <laughs> they never move out of mommy's house. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Sit on the couch and f***ing the You disgust me. Don't offend the viewers. I'm not offending them, bro. They're probably... If they are doing that, bro, they needed it. So what is eudaimonia? Eudaimonia, Aristotle believed that humans ultimately strive to achieve eudaimonia, and when you achieve it, then, then it's ultimate happiness. So eudaimonia is by living a virtuous life. And by living a virtuous life, you have to follow 11 virtues. For a couple of examples, there's courage, liberty, and proper ambition. People attempt to follow these 11 moral virtues in order to become a virtuous person. Some of which fail, and they don't reach the day loss. Some of them do. But with every virtue, there's the golden mean. And the golden mean signifies that you just have to be in the middle. If you take one virtue, for example, courage. The golden mean in between the two is courage. However, if you have deficiency of courage, then it's cowardice. But if you have 
an excessive amount of courageousness, then it's recklessness. Mm -hmm. The ones that you don't want are called vices. So deficiency is vice, excessiveness is vice. You want to be just in the middle for when anyone strives to achieve all the virtues, if that makes sense. But like, I mean, honestly, that's like trying to, to achieve normal. Like nobody can ever achieve normal, you know what I mean? Like, and you can never achieve like a complete middle balance on everything. So like, do you just have to be perfect to like follow an Aristotle view, bro? Cause like, everybody's got they gotta work out, bro. I can see your viewpoint, but we must take into account that this was an ancient Greek philosopher who was taught by a guy who made the theory of forms. That is true. Aristotle also believed that self-discipline really matters in becoming a virtuous person. If you're not self-disciplined and you're always indulging in pleasures, such as playing video games, eat, eating chocolate, if you're not self-disciplined, you can't hold yourself accountable to 11 moral virtues. Yeah, it sounds like Aristotle was not like me, dude. You eat chocolate and play video games? Yeah, among other things. He didn't think I was a lazy I feel like this relates to our modern time because I feel like, especially for myself, self-discipline is very hard to achieve nowadays. Especially because there's so much dopamine that, that a society has normalized that we get from smoking, playing video games. We want to indulge in those pleasures for the dopamine. Yeah, and the worst thing is, and I'm talking to men and women, but especially the women, bruh, these are not a source of life, bro. They don't need to be on 24 seven. When you see that cute guy at the mall, you see that cute girl at the mall, turn your freaking phone off. Stop surfing through whatever the bull crap that you know you ain't reading on. But yeah, I, I totally agree with you. The crap we get from the dopamine and all the stimulation we get from all the technology and just like, bro, we can order food, any food we want now to the house. That's godlike power. We use practical wisdom to decipher and determine the golden mean and the 11 moral values. I feel like he made this just because there's no religion because this was ancient Greece. I mean, there was religion, there was the mythical gods, but mythology doesn't give you a very structured moral code. And I feel like Aristotle needed to make this for himself, maybe, and, and for people of ancient Greece, because there wasn't a religion, I think, until Christianity came, and that was 300 years later. I got you. And Do you agree? Yeah, because, like, I mean, well, if you think about, like, modern Catholicism, if you're a Catholic, you can basically do anything besides, like, be a pedophile or, like, a hooker and freaking repent it the next day and you're good life is a is a spectrum of different things and so long as you stay in the middle of those different things of like the consumption of it and you're not too far extreme and you're not too light with it and you're getting just enough and you're you're you know trying to do good with whatever you're doing yeah sounds like a pop-up religion that like people would get behind back then. People feel like they need to have a moral code to guide the, their moral compass and not not just rely on, on their own intuition. I also think, man, like as smart as they were and as much good as they've done for history and humanity, they really should have been like more foreseeing about like something. Their idea of like the perfect person or the perfect as they've done for history and humanity they really should have been, like, more foreseeing about, like, some things. I don't know, like, this, like, their, their idea of, like, the, the, the perfect person or the perfect, like, uh, life is just, like, man, like, was everybody perfect in Greece? It seems like they're focused on perfection. Yeah, like, they're just in different ways, you know? Perfection's cool and all, but, I mean, it's never a true perfection. Perfections in the eye of the beholder. I agree with you. So Aristotle, he left his, his hometown and then moved to Athens at, at 17 and then attended Plato's Academy. And then he learned about the theory of forms. He had a, a, achieved a broader perspective of Platonism. Plato retired and then later he died. And then Plato's nephew came and was working in the academy. He was the, the big boss. And then Aristotle dipped. He didn't want to be a part of the academy anymore with that guy. I'm sure he wasn't as wise or as knowledgeable as Plato at all. He made his own school and it was called the Lyceum. Similar to the academy, although 
you know, teachings of this, teachings of virtue theory. Later on, it didn't survive as much as Plato's Academy, because Plato's Academy survived 900 years, while the Lyceum, it survived a good couple hundred, but around 100 AD, there was a Roman onslaught. They broke down and, and assaulted the, the Lyceum. There still remains, of course, it looks like a bunch of crap. If you don't know what the Theory of Forms is, there's going to be a link up here. Go watch the other video with me and Hershey. You'll understand what we're talking about with the Theory of Forms. Aristotle didn't believe that there is another realm. He believed that there are forms, but he believed that they lied in the physical realm, the material realm. He made the quote that all men by nature desire to know. He said humans take delight in their senses and learn through sense deception. Plato would heavily disagree with this because Plato argued that humans love to use their senses to understand things. However, we cannot stress our senses and gain knowledge through our senses. When we look at something like, like a dog, we see the beauty in it because we're using our eyes. Our eyes cannot register what true beauty is because it's only part of five senses and are not reliable at all. While Aristotle felt like people are curious just by nature and, and they delight in using their senses and using senses is okay. That's a valuable source to depend on as our senses. I heavily agree with Aristotle on what he said. What do you think? I do too, bro. If you smell that smelly dude in class and he stink every day, you learn that he don't shower and you need to stay away from him. That's knowledge coming from your senses. Plato was wrong. Aristotle. Plato believed that forms exist in the theory realm and shadows, referring to the allegory of the cave, shadows remind us of the form. Well, Aristotle believed that forms resided here in the material realm. They still believed in forms and the essence of forms, so they still agreed on that, but they largely differed in using your senses and the theory of forms realm. He made something that's called the four causes, and the four causes is how we're able to identify the essence of something, we recognize the material that's made out of, the source and cause, the essence, and the final cause. We've got the formal cause, the definition for the essence of the thing, example a human, essence of a rational creature, rational primate. Then material cause, what is it made out of? It's made out of skin, blood, and guts. A vision cause, who made it? Final cause, what is the cause? What is its day loss? Aristotle believed that the final cause for humans in the Delos was achieving eudaimonia, living a virtuous life. He would use the four causes for anything that he was identifying in all of his fields of research. He used this very broadly, not only for humans and metaphysics, but for his large areas. I feel like it's just a different way of like explaining science, anatomy, dreams, like human dreams versus like chasing that job you always wanted or that career you always wanted. It just seems like he was just finding a different way to explain the human experience and why we're here in like a more simplistic way for for his time. He made it layman's terms, which helped out a lot. Just overall, what's your thoughts on Aristotelianism? He was a little bit cuckoo, but he was a little bit right. I mean, virtue theory can still apply today. Virtue theory is a good idea, but like it's a little bit idealistic. Like the way he simplified the human experience into four categories. That was pretty ahead of his time, really. Was. Well, Gage, today you learned a lot about Aristotelianism. Yeah, I did. Thank you so much for having me, my man. Welcome, Mike. Glad I can educate you on this topic. I'll see you guys in the next video.